Hi, and welcome to PhD at Living. I was recently watching my favorite hunting show, Meat Eater. The host, Stephen Ranella, was fishing in the Amazon and had a drink prepared from the cassava plant. It's a woody tuber, kind of like a potato that's found in the... It, it doesn't matter, this is not a biology channel. Interestingly, he said improperly prepared cassava has cyanide in it and can kill you. Cyanide in a plant? <laughs> yes, please. Let's talk about that. Turns out the cassava plant Okay, fine, one more. When dried and ground, the cassava plant turns into tapioca. It has two compounds called cyanogenic glucosides. Here's one, lanamarin. The other one, lotaustrolin, just has an extra methyl group over here. The glucoside part should sound pretty familiar because we talked about glycosidic bonds and stuff like that in our sugar discussion. And wait a minute, that sure looks like a sugar looking thing right there. Oh my God, that glucose is music. We've talked sugars to death though, so we're gonna kinda go away from this part of the molecule and concentrate over here. This C triple bond N functionality is called a nitrile group, or cyano, same exact thing. In the cassava, a creatively named enzyme called lanamarase breaks down our lanamarin into glucose and this molecule over here. We break the oxygen right here and we create acetone cyanohydrin. The cyanohydrin group is just a carbon that has both a nitrile group and a hydroxy on it. As an aside, compounds like these that have two fairly reactive groups on the same carbon tend to like to rearrange. It's sort of the same thing you see in a geminal diol, meaning there are two hydroxy groups on the same carbon, or in an enol derivative, where a carbon has a double bond to a second carbon and a hydroxy also on itself. Here you can see the acetone cyanohydrin a little bit better. Whether by reacting with water or in a simple spontaneous rearrangement, this turns into boring old acetone and hydrogen cyanide. And this is the guy that kills you wicked fast. The nice part about this whole thing is you can prevent it from happening inside your body simply by boiling your cassava. The lanamarase still acts on the lanamarin, creating your acetone cyanohydrin, breaks down, and your HCN evolves away in the air, not getting inside your body and not killing you. Which is nice. So, what to do about cyanide poisoning? Let's say you're Gene Hackman in the chamber. Can you prevent that whole dying by cyanide thing? Well, theoretically, sure. First, we could use the thiosulfate anion, S2O32- to react the cyanide into the certainly not as toxic as cyanide, but still probably not that great for you, thiocyanate anion. Let's take a look at that. In this fairly simple reaction scheme here, we can see the thiosulfate anion reacting with the cyanide anion to become thiocyanate and sulfite. I'm ignoring the cations in all of this because we're assuming they could be anything like sodium, potassium, or even hydrogen, like in the hydrogen cyanide scenario. The thiocyanate anion can be excreted in the urine as opposed to preventing oxygen consumption in the tissues and killing you. The real antidote to cyanide poisoning is hydroxocobalamin, or vitamin B12A. I'm not going to draw it for you because it's effing huge, but suffice to say it chelates the cyanide into cyanocobalamin, another derivative of B12. That's processed through the kidneys and excreted through the urine, so there actually is some hope for you if you have cyanide poisoning. And that, kids, is why you always boil your cassava before eating it. See you next time. Never rub another man's rhubarb. <laughs>